great. Well done. Very good. So, you're doing well. You're doing very, very well. And you've made a lot of progress since September. The reason I asked you to play, do you know why I asked you? What, what, what was it you think that, that I, what did I, why did I want you to come and play here? <laughs> to see the difference, like how I changed. <coughs> what? To see? To see, like, if, like, how I improved. No, 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 I'm not interested in that because they didn't hear you anyway. Okay. Right. No, I had something very specific I wanted to say to you, which is you're, you're like a, a great number of very serious, dedicated, hardworking, well taught young people who play the violin very well. And very little else happens except that. And you're very focused on playing and on your fingers, and you're not focused really on what you're saying. And so I thought, that's, now you've just joined our, our it's not an orchestra, it's a way of life. You know, the BPYO is a way of life because it includes everything. It includes the week, it includes assignments, it includes, deep friendships and involvement in music. And you notice that when I'm rehearsing the music, I'm always telling you what it's about. This orchestra knows, there are 120 kids in this orchestra, they know what's happening in Romeo and Juliet in every single bar. They know exactly what, what it's like, why Romeo, these two young people are lying in bed, it's their first night together, they just got married, she's 13, he's 16 and there's a bird on the flute. And they know what's going on because Romeo thinks it's the lark and Juliet thinks it's the nightingale because she wants to stay there. She doesn't want to leave. And he says, I've got to go, I've got to go because I've got to leave. You remember that whole discussion? And <gasps> the tension and the passion and the fear and the anxiety and the deep feelings it, in this music. That's what these musicians, these composers were dealing with. And you've still got music in the category of violin playing until you come to BPYO rehearsals on Saturday afternoon, isn't that right? <laughs> and then suddenly you burst into a world of color and love and passion and conflict and fear and you know, all that, isn't that great? And then you go home and you practice. <laughs> <laughs> And unfortunately, Saturdays, Saturdays for musicians is like Sunday for people going to church. You know, you have one hour of good time on Sunday and then you go back to the rest of your week, <laughs> the routine. And I, what I asked you here to do was to see whether we could pull you out of that violin routine, which is great. I don't want to say, I thank goodness you're practicing and you have a wonderful teacher and all of that is being taken care of and it'll get you to college. But will it get you to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. So I, I wanted to see whether... Now, one of the things you're doing... I, I'm, I'm trying out stands here tonight. They see, they're all the same. They all fall over. <laughs> ah, a stand. A practical stand. Okay. Now... You probably don't know this, but Tchaikovsky left metronome marks. And I know people make fun of me because I'm so interested in what composers write. <laughs> 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 but it is very interesting. And even Tchaikovsky, who's very romantic, you'd think he wouldn't bother with a silly metronome. I mean, that's a machine. What would Tchaikovsky... But in the, in the Fifth Symphony, in the slow movement of the 15th, Fifth Symphony, there are 18 different metronome marks in one movement. Every single section has a different, because he's tracing the emotion of it. And you don't consult your metronome, you may not even have one, and you, what you do is you, you've taken over the tradition of the violin players. And goodness knows there are a lot of great violin players to play. You can play Perlman, and you can play all those people. And for some reason, they all do the, the main theme too slow. 
right? They do, it's 80, it's a nice moving tempo. The opening, incidentally, you do too slow too, that's 126. I used to have a metronome, but I've lost it. Does anybody have my, let me just show you, just so you know, know what we're dealing with. I, I lost my metronome, but I have another one on this funny machine, look here. So 126 is the, hang on, 126. Oh. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Damn it. Set. 126. Should work. Set. Here it is. I don't know why it makes that funny noise, but that's the opening. I now don't know how to turn it off. Oh, yes, here we are. <laughs> that's the tempo. Isn't that a nice tone? So when you come in, when you come in, it's free. It's a, it's a, um, it's a cadenza, but still, it's in that tempo. Could you try for me? On body, body, body. What? I can't play this. Well, that's flutes. This is at 80, so... So, should we see what, what he wrote, just out of interest? And the secret of Tchaikovsky, either he's crying or he's dancing. Right? Either he's crying or he's dancing. And the dance for him was an escape from the misery of his life. Do you know something about, I think we've talked about it even, maybe not we, um, he had a very difficult life because he was a homosexual in a society that did not accept that. And even he had to get married in order to pretend. And the day after his wedding, he threw himself in the river trying to kill himself. Uh, that's the heartbreak of... Tchaikovsky, but then he escaped into the dance and he wrote those beautiful ballets. And this is a ballet. So to try from where it's our three. That's great. Now, let's find out the, the second theme, where it comes. The, uh, should we do that? Because you do that at about, you did that, at, you were around 45 or 50, something like that, so slow. And if you play faster, what, uh, what you can then do is be freer. Because when you're, fa when you're slow, you have to do it pretty much every beat because there's no time. You can't take any more time. If you do it faster, you have a lot of freedom. So should we try and see whether we can find the emotion of this music? You have a bad habit, which is you close your eyes all the time. Has anybody mentioned that to you? Yeah. Open them up, look, at the, look how nice the world is. There's all these people, <laughs> at least some of the time. Okay, here we just, can you go, go from, from somewhere before? Right, there, that's great, that's great, that's the place. No, where, where are actually you going? Where, where is that going? To the... Right, so... <laughs> Eventually we'll get there. I don't know quite where we're going. 
It's, everything's too slow. You're too slow. <laughs> Move here. <laughs> Can I suggest that you think there's an A, and then there's a B, and then there's a C sharp, and then there's a D, it goes up. So just do from here. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's what I meant. You know, at the beginning of Romeo and Juliet, Juliet is 13 and she's a young girl, and at the end she's a woman. You know, you, we tra we've tracked that. We've seen how it happens in the music. You just became a woman. <laughs> right? And all this nonsense of closing your eyes and saying, I hope nobody sees me. <laughs> No, you be out there and go with the passion of the music. Find the passion of the music, engage with the passion of the music, and give away the passion of the music. And then you'll have something to say. Otherwise, you're another competent violinist. You know, some people count sheep. I count competent violinists. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> to get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't a confident violinist. You understand? That's why I invite you. That's all. And if you can just make that decision from now on, just for the rest of your life, this life, <laughs> right, to say, I'm always going to play like an artist, like a grown-up, like somebody with something to say, and never just play the violin. Because life is not about progress. Life is about contribution. Do you get that? We think we've got to go, no, and then we do an exam, and then we get another exam, and then we do another exam, and then we get a job, and then we get a better job, and then we get a better job, and then we die. Right? That's the way we think. But it isn't like that. It's like the woman who took 25 cents out of her pocket and gave it to Jeremy in Harvard Square. So if you could think of it always as a contribution, everything you do. So take care of everything you say and everything you do. That's the assignment. And did you notice I gave you the assignment for the week? I'm going to give you exactly. Now that's a different one. Here it is. Bring purpose to the notes you play and the steps you take. Did you read that thing that I sent yeah. out? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. There's Roz, right? Roz who comes up with the assignments every week. We have assignments in the Boston Philharmonic Youth Orchestra. Okay. Every week, Roz comes up with an assignment and she says, where are they? Where are they? And I said, well, we're just coming up to a concert and I describe the situation. And then she comes up with, beautiful, thank you, Roz, for the... Incredible contribution that is, really. What's that? I said thank you. And yeah. Thank all the kids in the yeah. They do these assignments. They take the whole week and they do that. And this, they do the assignments. And, and we, when we go on tour, we have assignments for every day. Walk with spirit and love. The whole orchestra. You've got 120 teenagers walking around. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> no. No wonder everybody's in love with them, right? <laughs> so that's it. Bring purpose to the notes you play and the steps you take. And that's just happened, you know, and there wasn't a single person in this room who didn't get the message. Everybody got it. Yeah. So that's why I invited you, because when you did your audition, you were a little girl. And I don't want little girls in my orchestra. I want grown women <laughs> right, with something to say right? and men. And that's what they are. We have 12-year-olds in the orchestra, and they, they learn that too. So it's a journey we're on, and I wanted to engage with you about that journey right at the beginning before, because you will have two years together. Isn't that exciting? Well, What's that? I'm a soft. Oh, you're even a soft. Oh, three years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you, we, we'll have her back in her senior year. You wait. <laughs> anyway, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>